you my motivation Two time, what a beautiful creation Big lies, save lives I'm stuck in all your times, looking in all your eyes, girl Oh, you're my motivation Oh God, what a beautiful creation My big thighs save lives I'm stuck in all your thighs, looking in all your eyes, girl Size matters, we shall butter Toto matata, yani somebody's daughter Umeni fanya kwa koni mekua stalker Glema umbika from the top to the bottom Ushai pakata, ushai paka Utai pata vile we unaitaka Utani uwa vile le unaikata Nitai uwa ile siku ntai pata Uwata pipamba Nime ungeza size ya kitanda Baby love, you're a wonder You should know One time baby, you're my motivation Two time, what a beautiful creation Big thighs save lives I'm stuck in all your thighs, looking in all your eyes, girl Oh, you're my motivation Oh God, what a beautiful creation Big thighs save lives I'm stuck in all your thighs, looking in all your eyes, girl I'm stuck in all your thighs, looking in all your eyes Welcome, 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 welcome. This feels very new and hopefully going to be a thing that I'm going to keep doing. You are listening to your girl Mo right now and you are listening to the show Safe Space, meaning this is a show about anything and everything and y'all are safe, no insecurities, shaming up in here aloud, okay? Love lives here, okay? So I have... An amazing guest, and I'm gonna dive right into it because she's so not only she's a friend to me, but she's a, a how you gonna call it a, a culinary arts enthusiast. She's ten toes down, very influential, a uh, uh, entrepreneur, a content creator. She's on YouTube, guys, so you can see her face, and you're definitely gonna hear her today. And her name is Chef J for Chef J Plate. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Hi guys, so today I am really here on Safe Space with Ole. Thank you for inviting me. And yeah, as you heard, my name is Joanne. I am a chef and my other thing was. And as well as a content creator. Yeah, so that's what I do. She's out here hustling, y'all. Hi guys. Yeah, so um, my name is Joanne. Thank uh-huh. you for that intro, girl. My Welcome. name is Joanne. I'm a chef by profession and I am an entrepreneur and as well as a content creator, as Mo has explained. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Welcome. Safe spaces with Mo. Welcome. I'm so, so excited. I'm so happy feel, for you. Do you feel the warmth? I'm giving you a nice air hug. Yes, from I feel it, the, girl. The I feel it. You do? Okay. I do. <laughs> At the moment, we are listening to y'all are locked in, tuned in. Yes. To Radio 254, mm-hmm. the hottest radio station. I'm talking everything Nairobian. Period. Everything Kenyan. <laughs> do you guys feel the, the colors of the flag running through the, the, the blood veins? You yes. know, it's happening right here. Mm-hmm. Let's just dive in because I really want to introduce and take you through okay. my my realm. This is my show now. Yes. I can say that this is my show. Yes. <laughs> Since mm-hmm. I am a podcaster and a pleasure enthusiast, some of y'all might be asking, what exactly is that? What is a pleasure enthusiast? Well, it's pretty simple. We have a lot of people who are sports enthusiasts, music enthusiasts, whatever mm-hmm. kind of you whatever you're interested in and you feel passionate about and vocal and 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 wanting to people to educate them Mm. well then that's what it's gonna be Mm. so at the moment uh a pleasure enthusiast is myself uh i just enjoy pleasure and some of y'all are like "Mm -hmm, she out here (laughs) talking about romance she's talking about she's trying to get into bed with somebody (laughs) no that is not it all the time but it's 
It's like that some of the time. But it also means what brings you joy. What do you find pleasurable in your day, in your life, in your career? So I ask you, okay. Ms. Chef J. Yes. Joanne. Yes, girl. What do you find pleasurable in your life or your day or your career? Uh, I think that changes with time. It's always not constant. Mm-hmm. So at the moment, I feel like what brings me pleasure is uh, freedom and That's independence. Lovely. Yeah. I don't want to go so much into detail, but you know what's, what's no, happening. Yeah, I know what's happening. Yeah, so um, I feel like right now what's bringing me pleasure is the fact that I'm free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm in a safe space with more. Okay? <laughs> Y'all heard it. Y'all yeah. heard it. And oh, obviously food is there. Okay. <laughs> food has to be there. <laughs> Always. We need food. <laughs> we do. We do. Yeah. We need you. And, yes. and you, what about you, Miss Pleasure Enthusiast? Oh, oh well, um, what brings pleasure to me? Yeah. I think it's, I want to say my vulnerability. Being fearless of what I have to speak on, yeah. speaking on matters that like, mat- like matter to me, basically. Mm-hmm. So if it has to do something about I'm big on something like breaking generational curses. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people ain't seen that coming right now, yeah. but that's a big one because I think that as Africans, we have a lot to do to break a lot of these generational curses. And I also feel like I'm a huge uh, uh, activist when it comes to talking about consent and sex education in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I think I just enjoy, generally I love talking about sex, but it's important to understand what it is and the gravity and the magnitude behind it because a lot of people don't know exactly what pleasure is, what passion is. I think we just know from, you know, pornographic sites and and watching and looking at um, magazines and stuff like that. And movies. And movies. Movies are very misleading. Very. (laughs) <laughs> very, very. Those romantic movies, no. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, dude, your first time is trial and error. It <laughs> really just is. You'll guess. It's a guessing game. <laughs> it's a uh, inky picky ponky. Yeah. That's what it basically is here. Yeah. And a lot of us kind of just kind of learn through other medias and other alternatives and mm-hmm. find out exactly what we need from our other person. Yeah. So for me, another good one, guys. I think almost two years ago, the. Minister of Education was kind of advocating for porn sites to be eliminated from Kenyan access, right? Yeah. And I was like, what does he think he's going to even do if this even happens? So we're going to turn on a Chris Brown music video and we're going to see something that's know, going like to the music the children. videos are already sexual. I know, right? Yeah, so. so for me, I was just kind of like, okay, that's the wrong apo- approach here. Yeah. And I'm big on psychology. I'm big on therapy. I'm big on trying to leave the person better than I found them. Yeah. And, you know, also try to bring some love and light to the situation. And I hope that I'm doing that here. You are, girl. Okay. okay. And listen to me, girl. Well, I hope yeah, the listeners feel are like, feeling that feel energy. You feel the same space right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm loving it, man. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Now that portion is out the way. We're going to get to the steamy, steamy questions later on. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, they're not that steamy. Eh? You can handle them. You can handle them. <laughs> I have uh, some questions for you in the safe space right now. Okay. And I want to know exactly when you are creating for Chef J, especially mm-hmm. your spices. By the way, y'all, she has spices and choma paste. Yeah. And she also got them, you know, lemongrass in the paper. Mm-hmm. Like she got that packaged dried. all well dried lemongrass. Yes. She's a real foodie, a yeah. real food enthusiast yes, completely. <laughs> so my question is because, you know, when you're Kenyan, you're always hustling. You're mm. always trying to figure out other streams of income. Even yeah. if you leave Kenya and you go somewhere else, that's the that's the same, you know, drive you have. Yeah. So for you, I want to understand, walk me through the process of creating who Chef J is right now. Oh, my God. As in, it's been a journey. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> so anyway, let me, let me try to get your question. Uh, when I'm creating my spices or mm-hmm. or what? Yeah. 
What makes yeah. you think this is what the Kenyan market wants to taste? This is what... Okay, now I, I understand the question better. Okay, yeah. so for me, it's just like, I love experimenting in the kitchen, okay? Mm-hmm. So, okay, when I'm cooking, I want to incorporate my own um, flavors and style into the food. So once I do that, I'm like, yo, people need to try this. So that's actually even how I came up with the choma paste. Mm-hmm. That's actually that it's it's a bestseller. So the choma you paste. heard that. <laughs> <laughs> the choma paste is basically like a marinade, mm-hmm. and it works really great with all the other like all types of meat. And there's some people who even there's some clients of mine who even do it on their vegetarian dishes because they're vegans and all that. So it's just um, what. I've, I've even talked, I've, I've lost my train of well, thought. Well, I, I could, I know you have, because you're just like thinking I'm all like, the trouble pace. What you was know? I saying? You, we're getting hungry, that's what I it know. is also, yeah. So I can definitely attest to that because yeah. I've tried your cooking and I've tried the choma paste one time yeah. and I already, when I was there, I was like, this thing, first of all, when y'all open the, the bottle, the smell, the, smell, the yeah. aroma that you get from it yeah. is breathtaking honestly exactly. you even want to i asked you can i put this on a fried egg <laughs> I, know you're crazy. I, I love me a good fried egg can i put it on a fried egg yeah so basically it's just um a trial it's basically like a trial and error basically mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. once i do it like the trauma piece once i tried it i tried it first on chicken it went really well i tried it on lamb and other like types of meat and also vegetarian dishes and it really blended well and i o- and just the fact that that happened for me mm-hmm. i wanted to share it with other people because i think that's what that's another thing that brings me pleasure actually okay <laughs> yeah oh. like sharing with other people my creations okay so exactly. it's just a matter of okay you guys need to try this and yeah if you love it like well and good <laughs> and if you don't I'll, you'll love something eventually. Oh, you <laughs> yeah, will. so that's that's how the creative process goes. Because at first you have to try it by yourself, mm-hmm. and then now you take it out to other people to try it out. Awesome. Yeah. I so obviously I'm going to bounce back the question to you, <laughs> <laughs> Maureen. You're Bring a podcaster. Uh huh. Okay, and. The creative process of what you talk about in your podcast. Mm -hmm. Take us through that. I think it's uh, a lot of the times I've already had things listed out in like a notebook. Mm -hmm. And I love to write. I can't be on my notepad on the phone because it doesn't feel the same. For me, it comes through writing. I'm always scribbling, journaling, writing something. I'm caught there in the office. The manager is like, hey, Maureen, have you done this? I'm like, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. (laughs) Um, But I'm usually writing about things about how the brain works because that really intrigues me. That makes me feel like, okay, how does this person, how does, it sounds crazy, but how does a sociopath think? How does a person who gets into multiple relationships and have zero feelings think? Like, how does somebody who's a narcissist think? How does somebody who has baby mama, baby daddy issues think? Oh you know Lord. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I find that very <laughs> intriguing. I want to understand how the mind works, yeah. and I think that's why I have a love for psychology. So when when I find also trending topics in Kenya or Africa mm. that move me, it kind of just happens. Like, whatever's trending, if there's a situation about, you know, these love crimes that happen... You're just like, which have been damn. a lot. Which have been a lot. Yeah. But you also have to be like, let's talk about this. Let's open this. Yeah. You know, it could be a can of worms you're opening, mm-hmm. but at least we're having space to have that conversation out there. Mm-hmm. We also need to talk about, you know, real shit. Like, I don't know, we can talk about love. Talk Girl, about sex. how it is for the single people, because hello. Girl, <laughs> how people are on Tinder, Grindr, Hinge, all these different dating apps, eh? Yeah. Because that's just like another realm of you to just be like, okay, okay, what do I really want? What am I looking for? Yeah. Am I trying to be serious? Am I trying to just hook up? Um, basically, my, my, my walkthrough process of mm-hmm. when I start writing an episode for the show on the podcast it has a lot to do with what's trending in Nairobi. Yeah. Um, what I feel we need to discuss, 
Also, I love getting people's opinions who listen to the show yeah. and find out what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. Someone, like, people in the office are like, talk about sex. And I'm like, all the time? It's always us to All the time. <laughs> As in, people can never and get tired of that. talk about something that. else. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's obviously, because sex sells. Everybody wants yeah. to listen to it. Everybody wants to have it, have it, have it, mm-hmm. and also listen to it and also, you know. Guys, I was going to just give a dirty joke right <laughs> over there, but let me just keep my mouth closed. Don't hold back. It's a <laughs> safe space. We the mo. <laughs> I might break the joke out later, guys. I don't want to startle some people listening. Uh, so, mm-hmm. now I want to find out. Since you're a creator, mm-hmm. content creator, hustler, chef, you're a, a, a lover of food, and the products that you produce, because honestly... I have seen other chefs and other creators do their own things. Whether you're a creator and you love makeup and you want to now start like a new line or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like that is the next step that helps you set yourself apart from the regular person who's just posting? But now you have products. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you're, you're setting yourself apart? Like you're trying to build something for you? Because... Yeah, definitely. Like... Um Okay, you know, my social media presence, you know, it's already Mm. everything to do with, like, my chefing. Yes, yes. You won't find me having a personal account. That's a real verb, chefing. (laughs) What's she doing? She's chefing. That's what it is. She's chefing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so you won't find my personal account or anything personal on social media. So I take social media a way of, like, just people interacting with each other based on their careers, let me just say that, mm-hmm. or their skill set. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, posting about my chefing... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Put it out there. Yeah, it's... Um, I don't... Okay, p- you know, everyone can do what they want on social media, so yeah. I don't really look at it like, oh, she's posting her personal shit. Mm-hmm. Okay, I hope we can say that. On I radio. hope so too. It's a safe space. It's <laughs> oh a yeah, it's space. a safe space. <laughs> safe space. Yeah, so um, I don't I don't really look into that as much because when I'm posting, mm. you see how I post like, um, like sometimes I post recipes. I want to share. Mm. Like I want people to cook right. Okay, so <laughs> I was actually she even really having extended the tea in the right, She's right, like, right, right. right. <laughs> okay, y'all are messing it up. No, <laughs> <laughs> no as in guys are uh, like you know people don't even take time to even let the tomatoes cook. Mm. As in, I have a problem with that. That's me. That's me. By the way, <laughs> do you see me when there's there's oil in the sufria and I throw away and throw the meat? And yeah, like it splashes. It takes That's time. Me. Anything yeah. good takes time. So. Yeah. I just want to share with people and interact with people who are in the same mindset. Mm -hmm. So the thing about, like, I don't look at other people like that. Like, you do you, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Social media is for everyone. But for me, I'm going to sell myself every post. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you do that pretty well. I mean, there's a whole tattoo of a a knife on you. And I've (laughs) always loved this tattoo. (laughs) But she's very passionate. It's like... How could you not? Because obviously you're a part of this even. You you demonstrate it even on your body. You demonstrate yeah. it on your social media. You, mm-hmm. you you make sure people are mindful of who you are and yeah. know who you are. Yeah. And I love that, girl. Thank you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 now. In fact, let me not give the juicy question right now. No, I want to get to the juicy part. <laughs> it's my show, okay. Jojo. So... Congrats, by the way, on the birth of Cooking with the Stars. Oh, thank you. Because I think that's so cool. It's such a nice, um, it's a come up. It's a different, like you're building a different segment now. Yeah. Well, now, Chef J. Yeah, yeah. And if you had to have three Kenyan stars okay. and three international stars oh, no. on your show, mm-hmm. y'all better listen on oh, no, up because she might just say your name. <laughs> Who would those three Kenyan and three international stars be? Oh, my God. Go, gun to your head. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot. <laughs> okay, three three Kenyan stars. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me let me think. I, Maureen, you should have prepped me for this. <laughs> anyway, uh-huh. so I'd, I'd really like... I don't know. I, I, I like Red Sun. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd really like to have red sun in maybe season two of Cooking for the Stars because yeah. you, you're aware like the season one was for influencers. Definitely. Yeah, so I'd love to have red sun. I love his music and mm-hmm. where I used to work with meet all the time because mm-hmm. he used to go there for he used to go to the gym. Yeah. So I'd like to meet him and he's a chill guy as far I'm, as I'm concerned. And then the second one is um I'd like to to cook for who? Oh my god. Anybody this, is just this on the could spot. even be like Oh okay, I'd like to cook for Tanasha Donna. Oh yeah, mm. put it I, up. I love her. <laughs> if you're listening to this babe, I love your music. I love you as a person <laughs> although yeah. we've never met. <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to cook for her. And also okay, the third person is um Jimani. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Jimani, hey. <laughs> I hope you're listening to this. I hope he I'd is. I'd love to cook for you, okay? <laughs> Chef and, then he also, and then there's also a mix there that he does for you on the side yeah. as you're cooking. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, he's cool people. And Please make sure you have him wear an apron. Obviously. Dude, <laughs> I would love to see that. So those are the three, like, Kenyan artists yeah. or, or celebs that I'd like to cook for. That's and nice then list. international, um, international. Okay, I like I like dancehall. So mm, mm, mm. I I'd, I'd love well to. He, he's Sing in jail. Like. He's in jail right now. Ah, <laughs> you can do vibes cartel. You can do. You can ask the government <laughs> to arrange something at the jail and deliver. And then deliver at <laughs> yeah. the jail. And then he knows. And then you have a ca- nice note saying yeah. this is from Chef J. I'm yeah. from Kenya. I've loved your music. Um, you know, um, like you know those people who are diehard Wives Cartel yeah. fans. I know you are. That is I me. I know you are. Gaza for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Wives Cartel, and then obviously, I'd love to cook for Obama. Oh yeah. Hello. Hello. Obama. Michelle can get a little, you know, the doggy bag after that. The no. extra. Oh. <laughs> The Obamas, let me just say oh, yes, the, yeah, Obamas. the Obamas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Obamas and then the third person probably just like I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Anybody I can't think of okay. A musician, an actor. Um, hmm Let me see. Maybe another international chef. Oh yeah. I'd like to I'd like to be in the kitchen with I know it's cliche but Gordon Ramsay. Everybody wants to be in the yeah. kitchen with Gordon Ramsay. I want to meet him. I want him to shout at me and tell me, like, no, do this. And <laughs> yeah, I want all that. I'd actually prefer somebody who does that than somebody who's just like, oh, it's so nice. And then when they go, they're like, girl. Joanne, this is <laughs> bloody nonsense. I know. <laughs> I, I like Gordon Ramsay because he's true. He's yeah. real. Yeah, he so, is. And yeah. when you receive a compliment from him, it's so genuine. And yeah. the way that he even says, your dish was spot on. It yeah. reminded me of my childhood. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> I've done an amazing job. Eh? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Nice, nice one. <laughs> Let me go on. Eh? Mm-hmm. Does being Chef J in front of the camera affect your mental health? Uh, in front of the camera. Yeah. How do you how do you manage that? Like your mental health generally, because you're you're putting yourself out there. Mm-hmm. You're allowing outsiders to look within, and sometimes, as we know, we're all human. Sometimes, even just people who are trolling or people who just out here just trying to start something. Yeah. Because you know, everybody, everybody, everybody has a hater or two. You know. Yeah. Let's be honest. Somebody already is like this girl. I don't know why she's talking like this. Where's she from? Is she really Kenyan? Yes, I'm Kenyan. I'm 100% Kenyan, eh? Yes. I just have a little bit of extra, extra oomph, oomph over here. There's spices. I took some of them Chef J spices up in here. Spices. That's, that's how you go sound exotic, girl. You yeah, know you so, love me. Uh, no, uh, about mental health. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it affects. Like, uh, when you have gotten one hater comment before mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on one of my youtube videos but yeah. it's just ignore ignore you know you know when you hear these celebs who've already made it and they're like oh we just ignore and you're just like really because you're human of course you're gonna go through those comments of course man but like for real for real you either just ignore or you just concentrate on those 
comments yeah. and, and all those haterish things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's so many things that happen ba at the back. Of your mind? No, as in at the back of the camera. Okay. <laughs> like ah, behind ah, the camera. Ah, ah, ah. All right. <laughs> so when people get to see videos, you're just thinking, oh, she just picked a video and in it. But it's not that way. Like, it takes a, a lot of preparation and work and dedication and everything. So... For those people who are going and hating on people who are who are trying to create something, mm -hmm. I think just just like reduce kidogo, cause yeah. <laughs> yeah, people out here are really doing their best. Mm -hmm. So if if you don't have anything nice to say, shut up. <laughs> you heard it, and she said it softly yeah. because the knife on the tattoo is going to show you the rough side. Huh? <laughs> yeah, just so be aware. Just how I uh, how I uh, maintain like maintain it i have a therapist mm -hmm. that i talk to mm -hmm. and then also um, i've i've been doing journaling and mm -hmm. i've been keeping a gratitude jar so it it might not look like when you're doing it it might not look like it's doing much for you yeah. but eventually uh sub and subconsciously or unconsciously subconsciously. one of them yeah. yeah like the change starts coming up yeah. So it's up to you. There's so many ways to like help you, your mental health and all that. So it's up to you as an individual to figure out how to do it and what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. What so about you? You do podcasts. Eh. You're a baker. Eh. Eh. You're working. Eh. You're here at Radio 254, girl. Eh. Tell I us, tell us how do you maintain all that? Responsibility, mm -hmm. bills, all yeah. that. Um. I think for me, with my mental health, I also journal. I love to journal. I love to write. Um, I used to go for therapy. Mm -hmm. I stopped, but I want to start going back again. Uh, but therapy does help. And I can say that, you know, when you watch Ian Levinson and she does, like, the whole therapy session for, like, <laughs> Tony Braxton's whole family, and then somebody cries, and then somebody admits a, st a secret, and you're just like, whoa, all this in one session. I know. Like, but... For me, obviously, the first session of therapy came in. Now, let me give you guys a story. Okay. So the first <laughs> therapy session I had, mm -hmm. it was two hours long. And then the therapist is asking me, okay, do you remember when you were the age of one, the age of two, until the, my age yeah. currently right yeah. now? And I'm like, eh, I don't remember one. I don't remember two. <laughs> I don't remember three. <laughs> I don't remember. And I said, I told her, me, I remember from seven till now. Yeah. And she's like, what about five? And Blackout. Girl, it's a blackout. <laughs> it's a blackout, man. Anyway, but therapy is something that Kenyans should not be afraid of. Yeah. Africans should not be afraid of. Mm -hmm. Therapy is real, dude. We have a lot of uh, wounds that have been inflicted on us. Some of us from the word go, from the moment we were born, some of us were inflicted with some serious wounds out here. Yeah. And it's important to, you know, do the work and heal. Invite healing into your life mm -hmm. so that you don't make decisions that really create a cycle because that's what i'm saying generational curses because yeah. you're going to now date somebody who used to you you've seen uh violence in your home and then you think you're like okay maybe that's love maybe that's that person that loves me then you go you go now instead of the nice nerdy guy um <laughs> that's there at school that likes you that probably does really sweet things for you you're like, eh, this one is a weak link. This person doesn't love me because they're not showing that they love me. And maybe your love is different because we've all been brought up differently. Yeah. So I think that's also why there's an epidemic when it comes to dating in Kenya, in Africa, <laughs> in the world. That's why these dating apps, I'm not on them, eh? I yeah. just, I like to find somebody like at the bar. At, at, yeah, like at real life Real life connection. interaction. Yeah. yeah. Mm. At the market, yeah. wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's that's me. I think therapy is a big deal for me. Um, I love journaling, reading. I'm currently finishing the book, Four Agreements. I've been finishing it for so long. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have an amazing family. I love my siblings. They're so supportive. Shout out to them because I know that they're tuning in. If they're not, you better be at your desk at the <laughs> office and start tuning in right now. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. But um, I have an amazing f uh, family uh, support system that actually helped me. Yeah. You, obviously. 
our friendship has been going on a, a long distance here. Eh? Yeah. And uh, I've given you a, an emotional hug from this corner of the table. Yes. But <laughs> yeah, I think just having the right people in your corner, prayer. That's important. Yeah. Grace. A journaling therapy. Yeah. That's how I handle it. And then also, it's not like a done deal. Like once you oh. go therapy, it's now you're cured. No. Because every day, work. yeah, every day something like new things happen. You interact with so many energies. Yeah. So it's not like people who are going to therapy are like perfect. No. No one is perfect. No. So we all have work to do on ourselves. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's such an interesting Oof. turnaround, girl, that you didn't yeah. ask me about that. <laughs> now let's go to a portion of your career, which is also kind of similar to my past career, mm -hmm. the hotel industry, yeah. restaurant industry. Yeah. What was your first, like, rude awakening? Mm -hmm. Can I first share mine? Yes. My rude awakening, eh, when we finished campus, mm -hmm. and obviously you're going to go look for jobs. This is after 2016. You're going to look for jobs in Nairobi. And then uh, you find out the salary. The salary. <laughs> <laughs> that was the rude awakening. Because I've always had a love for the hotel industry, hospitality industry. I used to think, like, people in the hotel would make money. Bolas. Eh? In the early 2000s, <laughs> you're seeing people, chef, this chef from which restaurant is making this kind of money. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, I suppose, back then, the, it was, the, it it was, was a bit better. Yeah. It was. But... When we graduated and when we were done and looking for a job, you know, in an interview, I think I asked for, because I must have been about 22 when I was asking for this, and I asked for <laughs> 100K, dude. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm the short of the password. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. I asked for that kind of amount, and they were like, you know what, you don't have experience, you've just come out of yeah. campus, even though you've done internships here and there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> they're like, this girl has her head in the girl. clouds. <laughs> She's, where, which country is she in? <laughs> eh? She's in Kenya, you know? <laughs> so for me, I was like, Ish, that's some money that I've asked for. Because I've always felt like I love this industry and I'm going to put my best in it, you know? And, I, and I'm obviously never going to let anybody down because, yeah. you know, you're young and you're enthusiastic yeah, about everything. You're psyched. You're psyched. You're psyched. Going into the industry. Eh, Joanna, yeah. are we psyched right now? <laughs> is it still it there? is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> oh, you're going to offer me that. Okay, it's temporary then. Yeah. Sometimes that's the situation, eh? Mm. But that was my first rude awakening yeah. for the industry, the hotel industry. So tell me about <laughs> yours, eh? Okay, okay. For, my, for me... Uh, okay, obviously there's internships and yes. I've done internships yeah. before going to ask for a job. Mm -hmm. And obviously like at that time you're like asking the guys you work with yeah. in that internship, like how much do they earn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to ask. Yeah, if there's one thing I'll do, I'll ask. Imagine I didn't do any <laughs> of that. I think that's I why ask I asked for what I asked so for. So many things. Yeah, Yeah, I don't like Anyway, that's a story for another day. But yeah. <laughs> so uh, when I asked them and they told me, I was just like, really? With all this work that we do? It's a lot, eh? And the hours you stand. <laughs> like if you're, anyone, you stand. if you're anyone in the hotel industry and you're watching. And you're listening. And you're listening. <laughs> what? Yes, please comment below or anything. Like Let just put a comment. Talk to us. Like this, this thing of like you, you stand for so long. Do, eh? So many hours, the work that you're doing, it's never ending. Actually, I used to make a joke like in, in the hotel industry, once you get into these shifts, but once you enter your shift, you don't know what time you're going to check, you're going to yeah. come out. Yeah, especially if it was the festive season. Yeah. Oh my God. You can even end up sleeping like at Might work. not go home. Yeah. Especially Christmas, Valentine's Day. So it's just yeah. crazy. I think it's time for... Kenya as a country to just really appreciate the workforce. Definitely. It's not only hotel industry. I'm sure yeah. there are other industries that oh, for sure. down down pay their people. Yeah. As in pay people what they are worth. Mm. Not even like what the, like the amount of work that they put in. Pay people mm. that. Like you know it will even encourage them to even help you build a bigger and better 
brand that and, you're doing. And at the end of the day, money is always going to be the biggest motivator out it's here. It's always. Even if you go to an interview and you're like, oh, I just want to be an experience. Da, 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 yeah. Girl, you need to pay your rent. <laughs> at all the end this, of the all day, this niceness. Yeah, it does, at the, the end of the come, day, you know, money is, yeah. you know. So just, even if it's not via salary, at yeah. least you know, in the hotel industry, there's things like um, the service, the service yeah. charge that yeah. people get. Yeah. There's some institutions that cut off the service charge, like they they don't give their employees the full service charge. Like just give them. At the end of the day, they're the ones who are serving the guests who are coming to your establishment. So I feel like guys need to be true and transparent. But I also feel like it also has to start within because if you're working in the hotel industry or whatever kind of industry and you're feeling like you're not being paid what you, you deserve, even, but let's just talk about hotel because that's what we are very familiar with. Yeah. Um, you have to even have like moments in the meetings, you know, because obviously there's those staff meetings. And you can talk about, is there going to be a salary increment? Are we going to get a Christmas bonus? Yes. Let's start having that also <laughs> as an option. Because also, in my pr- in my current job, mm-hmm. those are the conversations we're having. Because it's real out here. The economy is not the way it used to be. Yeah, Things are going up. And you enter quick mud, a basket of four things, thousand bob, gone. Well, once you break I mean, a thousand bob. Once you break a thousand bob, it's done. It's, <laughs> it's over. You don't have any more money after yeah. that. So, for me, I feel like... It also has to start within, but I guess also that's figuring out, like, understanding your worth mm-hmm. and also understanding that you shouldn't be fearless. 90% of this life is confidence. Yeah. Figuring out, okay, I've worked this much, I've done this much, I've been loyal to the company for these many years. How is this going to be compensated here? Because mm-hmm. also it's this niceness of, and, and uh, maybe it's also in other parts of Africa, but it's this niceness of waiters and, and, and chefs, maybe. Like, you're just lenient because you're grateful that you have the job already, yeah. you know? And you're, you're gaining experience. And you're gaining experience. And that's actually, that's where it begins. When you're young, also, you're just like, eh, I'm grateful I have the job. Yeah. It's a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting experience. Mm-hmm. After this, I can eventually move on up and have something more tangible from here. Yeah, but I, I actually support what you're saying. Uh, for people, uh, like, looking out for themselves. yeah. And you know, there's a way you can approach your boss. Oh, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You don't need, you don't need to like say it on during the staff meeting. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't. I mean, you I mean, can I go on the side. Yeah, you can approach your boss in a way, and then also, what are you doing at work? Because you know there are people who are like they just go to work and they're just busy perambulating. Mm, <laughs> they're mm. doing nothing. I've come and in, then the and intern is the one who's doing everything. Yeah. So even you, like, be true to yourself. As much yeah. as you're looking out for yourself, be true to yourself. Are you working? Do you deserve that salary increase er, or promotion? Yeah. Yeah. Well said, girl. <laughs> Do you deserve it? Do you yeah. deserve it? But that's so true because you're right. Some people can just come in and then do the bare minimum or just do what's expected and then yeah. leave. Mm. And sometimes the person who's going to get more recognition from your boss is going to be the one who goes the extra mile. Yeah, but then again, probably you don't like them. <laughs> yeah, that too, that too, eh? Yeah. But then also in the matters of going the extra mile, it means now you're just going to exhaust yourself a bit more yeah. because you're going to be like, look, 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 I can do this, I can do this the mm. whole time. And you hope, you hope that they are monitoring you because okay. sometimes mm. that can be overlooked and be, you can be like, you know, patted on the back, but job well done, Joanne. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not going to do anything extra for you. I, I know. Yeah. But now, like, the way you've said it, like, also, it's the intention behind it. Yeah. Are you, like, putting in uh, extra effort because you want a promotion? I know that's the, that's the intention. Yes. But, like, I think guys need to be <laughs> more intentional. <laughs> like, just don't do it because... You, you want a salary increase. Because, you know, even these are people we are working with. Yeah. Your bosses, they see and they feed off energy. Mm. So if they can see, like, they can see a bullshitter and they can see somebody who's really, like, wanting to improve their career. Mm. Yeah, and themselves. So. 
I hope you all <laughs> didn't hear that. But speaking, speaking to Joanne about the hotel industry, I know she's still passionate. You still are. You yeah. f- you're, you're a foodie. Yeah. I've left it, even though I love to eat at times. I'm, I am a foodie, but I'm not that big on it. But I love, <laughs> I love when you cook. Eh? Yeah. Hey, I will finish that plate and go for <laughs> seconds. But if you had to give advice to an uh, 18-year-old who's applying to go to university this year, the intake is in May or in September this year, whatever campus it is, what advice would you give somebody who's telling their parents right now, I want to do this, and I feel like I'm passionate in the hotel industry. What are you gonna? What advice can you tell them? What? Be prepared. Okay. So just be prepared to stand. For so many hours, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the real thing. And and okay, the, actually, I've I've done a video way back mm. on, in on my YouTube vid on my YouTube channel. Yeah, about like basically, it's just uh, advising ladies or whoever will watch mm. on like the hotel industry. So yeah. basically, it's just just know you're gonna stand for long, and then also. Just really sit with yourself and figure out, like, do I really want to to enter this industry? And you know, like, you know how when when you have like an interest in something, you will obviously like ask questions. You will want to interact with people who are in the same industry mm. and all that. You'll you'll find yourself doing things around that industry. So if you if you're like telling your parents that you want to go to to like to do hotel management in a uni and at the same time like at home for right, right now like at home you're just like you're so into cars yeah <laughs> you need to sit down with yourself and ask yourself like do I really want to cuz most people mm-hmm. what happens most people say that they want to do hotel maybe because the requirements for entry is like less lesser than another course or something yeah yeah so what's the intention behind you wanting to do that course like if you if you just love eating and you want to know how to cook that's a good reason that's reason enough for you to try it out and if you don't like it at least you have a skill set that can help you in future yeah yeah so like just don't okay don't i'd advise like don't take it too seriously and also don't be too lenient like just go with the flow. If your energy is like telling you like okay, I really want to do hos- hospitality and all that and you find yourself energetically drawn to people in the industry, then that's for you. Yeah. But in the end of at the end of it, if you you figure out like eh, I don't want to work in hotels. Yeah. Find something else to do like create your own spices. O- open a YouTube channel. Like there's so much to do. And I know we're in a microwave generation where people yeah. want to like, hey, get I want to done, do, get yeah, you done. know, I want to get money like ASAP. Yeah. Guys are all about that bag, okay? Mm-hmm. So just just know things take time. Scared money <laughs> don't make no money. I know, yeah. things take time. So just be patient. If you're starting your YouTube channel, if you're doing your spices and all that, just concentrate on like building instead of like, I want money right now. Because it's all about the journey. We yeah. can all be excited. The journey is sweet. Yeah. Sweeter than <laughs> the end result. But is there really an end result, Maureen? I don't think there really is. I think is. the journey I continues. I think the journey always continues. Yeah. Even if you think you've gotten what you needed, there's still so much more in life. Yeah. And I think we should just be grateful that mm-hmm. we're in the space of constantly being on the go. Like, yeah. no one is just sitting on their ass right now yeah. hoping to get, oh, I hope I do this, I hope it, I, I hope I can accomplish this, you know? Yeah. I, I admire people who are so admi- ad, ad, ambitious yeah. to their craft and to their work and their passion mm. because you can tell, like, mm, this person is dedicated, this mm. person is actually taking it very seriously. Yeah. So so for chose? you, you mm. know, we are two, we are two people here, mm. There's one who's remained in the <laughs> hospitality industry, mm-hmm. and now there's you who has pivoted, yes. and you've left the industry. So, what advice do you have to to like people who are listening who probably want to like leave the industry they're in? I think you should you should just do a lot of soul searching, yeah. figure out what you are 
talented it. My uncle told me before COVID, because I moved back from SA then, and he was just like so annoyed with me because he's like, Maureen, this voice of yours, you need to make money with this voice. <laughs> I don't understand why you're over here applying for customer care, what, what, what jobs. I just know that you are going to make money and build a career and make it flourish because of how you speak, the truths you have, the conversations yeah. you bring out, you know, the, the invitations of people having quality conversations, you know. I think that's what I, I'm trying to gear towards. So a lot of soul so searching. Find out what you really want. Mm -hmm. What is authentically for you. Because everybody has a, you know, a gift, a knack, something that they're talented. There's someone who's really good at public speaking. Yeah. And they can engage you in so many workshops and so many events and speaking engagements here. And you'll be like, damn, like this person is really captivating when they're on stage or when they have a microphone on, in their hand. Mm -hmm. So find out what's meant for you. I know a lot of us have a lot of decision making. Mm -hmm. A lot of decision making when it comes to that. But soul searching <laughs> and then you'll figure it out. And it's also trial and error. Like at some point I also wanted to do a course on, you know, those um, the ladies who do like the extension lashes on. My, oh, yeah. Imagine I wanted to try doing that like almost two years ago. I don't but even you can't know. imagine that's something like it's just a skill. Yeah, but I was just testing it out. Yeah. I didn't know what exactly I was looking for. Yeah, And even when I thought of doing a podcast, my brother was like, you, a podcast. And you <laughs> never used to listen to podcasts. <laughs> but what are you talking about? Um, so I, it's a lot of dabbling. It's a lot yeah. of figuring out what you want. Maybe yeah. you're an excellent painter. Maybe you can sing. Maybe you're a poet. Nowadays, people get Grammys mm -hmm. for poetry. I think there's a chick who was on Solange's album, mm -hmm. her... Um, table I, I think it's called seat at the table that album that mm -hmm. she did and there's a interlude of a song where a chick was just having a poem there and she was nominated for a grammy what? nowadays people can just have a poem yeah. and you have a grammy yeah now like you you're starting a career from yeah. that as well yeah. you know so it's really up to you what you do That's but true. um yeah and i want to just give a nice saucy spicy question at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> All about pleasure here. And it's a safe space. Yeah. So as we know, I'm very open and vocal and honest about yes, you are. sex. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even let me finish <laughs> um, about sex. And I think that sex is amazing. Sex is yeah. amazing when you're just trying to work out. It's an exercise. <laughs> it can be an exercise too. Um, it's fun. It's just Fun energy, because also I've read that sexual energy can also implement into your work energy. Yeah. You know when you get just, you catch a good old nut, <laughs> you know, your day. <laughs> it sounds crazy, guys, but just stick with me. Stick with me. Yeah. yeah. When you catch a good old nut, I tell you, the endorphins that are released, because it's the same way like when you're working out, you're sweating, you're feeling good. And the moment you are done, you feel so Free, and your mind is so nice and clear. Honestly, that's when I can get work done. That's <laughs> when I feel like, okay, let me get back into it. Let me start. Let me get into the groove of things again. Yeah. I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. It's a silly question, but I just want to just ask. It. Ask away. <laughs> Here goes nothing. <laughs> um, for you, when it comes to pleasure, mm -hmm. are you vocal about it? Like, do you find yourself like, hey, you know, I heard from a friend of a friend mm -hmm. that it was good. Like, do you have conversations with your girlfriends like that, with with your sister like that? <laughs> um, okay, my girlfriends, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, like we always talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. So, um, I'm I'm vocal about my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Like, when I'm with someone, mm -hmm. I'd be like, I like this, do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like that's important because um, cause most of the time, like, okay, growing up, the people I've interacted with, like, even just talking about sex, yeah, most of you find most of the, it's actually women mm. most of the time. Mm. You find them that, like, they're just there. Yeah. So the guy nuts and... That's it. He yeah. he's, he's pleasured himself, but yeah. you you were just there. 
yeah. as a tool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So where is your pleasure in that? Yeah. So I feel like women need to be more vocal about what the things they like yeah. when it comes to sex and any other topic in life. But yeah, we are talking about sex now. <laughs> so yeah, women need, need to be more vocal about that. Yeah. Like, because... It's about your pleasure at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a two-way street in terms of energy exchange. Exactly. Sex is about energy exchange. That's another thing, by the way. Thank you for bringing that up. So if you're out here perambulating these streets. <laughs> and you know who you are. Just know you're collecting energies left, right, and center. Yeah. So you need to be really really uh what's the word yeah mindful about who you're interacting with not not only like sex wise like even just interaction Mm -hmm. because people there's too many many energies around hovering around so yeah when it comes to sex you really need to be careful about who you interact with yeah because the energy is gonna transfer to you. you Yeah, because, like, have you ever had an experience where you're like, okay, you, you meet a guy and then after you guys have met, you're so moody. Or, like, after that, when you have your period, it's so heavy. Like, yeah. <laughs> things like... Like, what are, did you done, done to me? Yeah, like, like there's, the, a, there's an exchange. You're so moody or now, like, all of a sudden you're, I don't know, like, just something happens. There's a shift. Yeah, there's a shift of energy, so... And then women are, we are receivers. Okay, so we receive <laughs> this A lot of y'all fellas don't heard an inside yeah. joke like that. Yeah, but yeah. it's true. Women receive. So, yeah. like, you, you tend to receive the guy's energy and the guy might not receive yours. Mm. Yeah, so, I don't know. Like, women, we need to be really careful on who we are dealing with yeah. in the streets. I agree, and I think yeah. this is a conversation that just needs to be had. I feel like a lot of people are shy. I don't understand why people yeah, are se- shy sex about topics sex. topics are shy, and I'm sure my oh sister my, is mm, watching. So, sister, from today. <laughs> we, go, we are going to talk about sex even when I come over. Okay? Don't cringe. <laughs> please don't. Please don't. This is a good, good it's conversation. A it's a safe space. <laughs> it's yeah. a safe space. Yeah. But um, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. And your sexual energy conversation. Yes. We are going to revisit this another time later. Yes. But I'm really grateful mm-hmm. that you are here. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. <laughs> I wouldn't have had anybody else here but my first time. Oh. My first time. I'm so proud of you, Maureen. Thank you. Yes. I hope everybody has received me well. I've loved every moment of being here in this studio. The energy is amazing in here. Mm-hmm. The people are so friendly and so warm and so nice. <laughs> I know. Nice. Yeah. This has been a lovely experience. Yes. And um, I do believe that mm-hmm. we do have a few minutes on in. And I would love for us to just listen to some good old music. Mm-hmm. To, you know, warm and up the soul here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey. Need
But before I do all of that, I'm going to let you guys know where you can find me. So if you check on Instagram, it's Maureen Gishanga. There's a different way. I feel like the Maureens that have different <laughs> spellings. Yeah. So it's M-A-U-R-I-N-E. Gishanga. G-I-C-H-A-N-G-A. Yeah. Maureen Gishanga. You can also find my line of work, which is of the pleasure enthusiast. I also provide adult toys. Risque, risque, Maureen. <laughs> but you can find Double Pleasure 254 on Instagram as well. And uh, you can also check out my podcast with my amazing Saucy with Sonia uh, girl. It's called Sincerely Wing Woman Podcast. So it's an amazing podcast. It's just an insight to a sisterhood meeting. Yeah. And y'all know you want to hear about that. Yes. Because there's some things y'all don't know, but y'all going to find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for having me. Radio 254. I love y'all. This has been yes, real. So much love. Tune in. For the rest of the show, y'all, and have yourselves a lovely day. Thank you, Joanne, for being here. Thank you for having me, boo. I'm so happy. Smiling from ear to ear. (laughs) Have a good one, guys. Love y'all. Bye, guys. Oh,
Like bum 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 big and low, oh death. Sin, 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 sin. I been, 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 go picking in, sipping on gin, 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 gin. Just to get this zing, 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 I'm sinking in tonight. I'm ready.